Hello everyone, drum tech drummer and online educator Kenny Sherritt is coming to you with a product review and tuning lesson video on a recently reissued Rogers Drum Classic, the Power Tone Snare Drum, y'all. Now Rogers is back in a big way, especially with these Power Tone Snare Drums, which feature Rogers' proprietary maple poplar shell with the two-ply re-rings, eight beaver tail style lugs, a mint repro of the Rogers clock face snare throw off, and 2.3 millimeter hoops for smoother tuning, more durability, and better sounding rim shots. And as a drummer who hits pretty hard, this is an element of the drum I am truly digging. Now, while I do love my Dynasonic snares oh so much, the Power Tone is a workhorse snare drum that fits almost any style of music. And it gives me the great sound of the Dynasonic shell, but with elements of a traditional snare throw off, as well as the great open pop of an eight lug snare drum, y'all. And this gives me more arrows in my quiver of drum sound, and that I'm digging. Moreover, this drum comes in at a price point that allows the working drummer to get themselves a piece of the legendary Rogers drum sound. And speaking of that legendary Rogers drum sound, let's take a look at the first tuning I have for you guys, which is a high tension perfect fifth, featuring the Evans Power Center reverse dot on top and the 300 weight on the bottom. Let's get to it, y'all. So this tuning is actually from the last time I played this drum at a show, which was a collection of Christmas cover band gigs where I had my Dynasonic tuned super fat and this guy tuned super tight. And the beautiful thing is that this tension, the playability of this drum is off the chain and the snare sensitivity is amazing across the drum. Now, if you notice, even though it's tuned high, there's a depth and a bottom end to the tone of this drum. And there's almost no sympathetic snare resonance. In and out. And these are hallmarks of the Dynasonic shell. This is a perfect fifth at a high tension. A perfect fifth, which gives the drum an open pop, kind of like an orchestral snare sound. And while the bottom head is about as tight as I'd like it to be, it's not too tight. It keeps the drum from choking. It allows me to tune up the drum tight and get a good crack out of it without it getting a choky sound. So let's check this out while playing. So the first change we're gonna do on this drum is actually take the bottom head down a whole step to make a perfect fourth between the two heads and see how that thickens up the sound and drops the pitch while still retaining the crack of the drum. And we did, and the best part about this is just a little turn on these to nudge them up just a touch more. And then I'll put this drum on its side to double check my interval between the two. Bum, bum, the perfect fourth. So let's see what this sounds like. And let's see how it changed the texture of this drum a little bit. Ooh. Oh, that's a little bit thicker, a little bit tighter, and not quite as resonant. So if you need something to bring the snare drum with, down in resonance without putting too much muffling on it, the perfect fourth just might be the way to go. All right, y'all, so now let's check out the next tuning, which is where I'm gonna take this top head down uh, about a whole step again and bring this down to where it's a perfect fifth of the snare drum, but we're gonna have a little bit fatter, more bottom-like tuning. Ah, it's just a little flat, so I wanted to make sure that I double check that, because again, when you release the tension of the top head, it's gonna affect the, bottom of the, the tension of the bottom head and vice versa.
Excellent. Again, mainly in the spots that I'm just wailing on this drum. But this is something that you should know because... And right there, let's just give that a little love up. We're gonna roll with that, we should have a lovely... Do, re, mi, fa, so. Perfect fifth between these two heads. And now let's see how just tuning that drum head, that top head down, like literally just a little bit, gives us a much thicker, more bonky kind of open snare sound that might fit for your classic rock band or maybe more of a swampy sound if you like tension on your drum head, but you don't want it down in the swamp, you know what I mean? You don't want it so loosey goosey you can't play it. You just want some response. And this is the tuning you'd want to try. Okay, y'all, so let's take it to the next step. Now we're gonna double check our tuning right now because we're gonna take this from an F to an E flat. So I wanna hear. Uh, right where I'm smacking on it, y'all. And this lets me know that this might be one set of tension rods. I wanna put some lug locks on on the bottom to make sure they don't come undone. But it's so minutely out of tune, it's pretty much because I'm smacking the drum pretty hard. So we got the F, so I'm gonna go ahead and go down a set of... So let's check between the two pitches. Boom, boom, perfect fourth. I'm loving it, y'all, so let's go ahead and give this drum a plan and see what it sounds like, y'all. You can feel the fatness start showing up on this snare drum here. And you can see how the thickness of the shell comes in even more to play, but there's still a nice crack. Again, a hallmark of the Dynasonic style shell. Uh, so let's go ahead and take this down one more tuning where we take this top head down to the uh, whole step to where we have a perfect fifth on this drum. And then I'm gonna kind of do one more kind of tuning for y'all to check out where it's more of like a half step between the heads and you can see the crisp dry sound of that at a medium tension. But until then, let's get to this super soupy perfect fifth. Okay, y'all, what I wanna do is take this top head down a whole step to an A flat. That way I got a perfect fifth between the two. The bottom head is tight enough to still have great snare response, isn't too soupy, yet I can get a swampy, fat back snare sound out of this drum. So let's go ahead and pop it into our plus X position. Double check our tunings on this drum just to make sure we're not out of place from hitting on it. Reach down for my keys. Give this one little spot where I was smacking it good. A little counterbalance for me smacking on this side with the, with the tension lock, and it kind of lets this one work out a little bit, but I don't like having too many tension locks around my drums. Just a few lug locks will do it. So I'm gonna pop those bad boys off, and man, I do gotta say I love those cardinal lug locks, y'all. I ain't gonna complain about them. All right, so let's go ahead and take this down. And I'm gonna share with you what just happened with this drum so you can understand. 
This one was feeling really loose, but was singing high. This one was singing high, but feeling tight. And I realized that's the time where we trade the tension. So I tuned this one up about a 16th, while this one's going down a 16th. And it brought us right into pitch. And we're ready to compare this to the bottom head. Let's see what it has to say. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Perfect fifth, y'all, the super swamp. So let's put this in playing position and see what this drum sounds like at a super swamp setting. Come on, y'all. Let's get to it. <laughs> oh my god, y'all, that is amazing. Listen to that. <laughs> so swampy. And yet I didn't have to go as lower than where I wanted to go, man. So an A flat to an E flat of this drum. Insane, y'all. You get all the swamp you want. Still great Sarah sniff sensitivity. And while it's a little bit sloppier in terms of the feel of the drum, man, the snare sensitivity is off the chain, and this is just ready to go for a super swamp snare, y'all. So let's go ahead and check out one final tuning on this drum, where I'm just gonna bring up that top head to kind of match that bottom head, and we're gonna see what a half step at a medium tension sounds like, y'all. Sound like a deal? Let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, y'all, so we're gonna go ahead and get into the final tuning of this drum, which is a half step between the top head and the bottom head. And that may mean I have to lower the bottom head a little bit, bring the top head up to match them close, but I wanted you to see what a dry tuning like that is gonna give you. Now let's go ahead and go in our plus X fashion, take these tension rock locks off, double check our pitches. First in the plus, then in the X. Oh man, this is gonna be great. We're up at a C. Now I'm gonna double check around quickly. And I'm gonna play this for you. There it is, this pair. Using the tap tap tune, you heard me tune this up. Do y'all hear that? Perfect, man. So the tap tap tune technique I teach in a lot of my videos works. Remember, you tap your target pitch, tap the pitch that's low, and bring it up quickly. Bing, bing. Just like you're tuning a guitar, y'all. But I want you to check this out because I'm pretty sure. Boom. May, the minor third, one of the most famous drum tunings in the world. Let's see what this sounds like before we go up another round of turns. And it gave me exactly what I expected, which is the kind of bend down donk you get from the minor third. So it's good to know that some things stay true, y'all. I'm gonna double check my tuning one more time here. Ha ha! And we have the 
the Jaws tuning, which is the half step. Now on this snare drum, I expect it to have crack, but I expect it to be a dry crack, to where if you want more of a hip hop snare, or more of a church tight snare without going too church tight, y'all, this might be the way to go. Now I haven't done it on this snare drum, but I know it works on my other snare drums, especially five and five and a half inch deep drums. But let's give this one a play and see how she sounds, y'all. Sound good to you? Let's check it out this way. <laughs> Crisp, dry, to the point. But obviously we have sensitivity from the edge to the center and because the bottom head isn't too loose, man. It's just a little loose uh, to match up with a tighter top head. We have the D to E flat going on. Let's hear what that sounds like in a groove, y'all. Oh yeah, that is a super crisp and dry tuning you all, especially for those who want a tighter, crisper, high snare drum. Uh, I'm absolutely loving it and I'm glad to know that this drum can hold it. So I hope you've enjoyed this demo and tuning lesson video on this power tone snare drum. For those of you just watching the YouTube channel, please know I go step by step on how I tune through all these ranges on the step by step lesson of how to tune a power tone at kennysherris.com. So please feel free to check it out and download the video or stream the video because it helps support my channel and helps you learn how to tune this eight lug snare drum to perfection, y'all. Solid.